I would like to share a few words about our next guest feature, Carolyn Waters. Carolyn is from Auburn, Massachusetts. She grew up in Philadelphia. As a child, she loved to read and she loved music and she especially loved whatever music she heard coming from the radio. Carolyn said that poetry and music were things that were always there for her at the lowest points in life especially. They uh, she said that they helped me to understand, express, and get through things. They have always been cathartic. It's only been in the past few years that Carolyn has uh, begun to share her songs out, uh, covers as well as more recently her original. She's performed in a number of different musical constellations from a cappella herself to duo to blues and jazz bands and she's even performed in a no such thing as a bad kid rap band with psychologist who's nationally known Charlie Appelstein. She recently was invited to perform at an event that was honoring Judy Collins and Tom Rush. Carolyn Waters just had her big release party for her first CD, Count Me In, the other night. She might be a little tired from that. It sounded like a great big event. So we look forward to the songs that she has to share with us here in Hopkinton today. And I will just uh, call her up with a few words that Carolyn uh, shared with me about the importance of song. She said, we need songs to let people know that they are not alone. In our joy, in our sorrow, in our heartache, we know through song that there is someone out there who understands. Music is universal, and the more personal, the more universal. Please help me give a warm welcome to Carolyn Waters. Thank you. It's, it's great for me to be here today, so thank you for having me. And um, I've done a lot of thinking in the last month or so as I approach this state about what poetry and song means, especially to me. And I think I, I love them and connect with them so much because they capture the human experience. They can capture a moment in time or a feeling. They can capture love and heartache and everything that you go through as a human being. A song or a poetry can capture that. And you can replay it or you can throw it away. I'm remembering second grade, Elverson Elementary School, Philadelphia, PA. I don't remember much more about that time, but I remember getting on a stage and reciting my very first poem. The sky is high, the sky is blue. I look at the sky all day through. <laughs> it stood up in time, it's like... <laughs> And that's what, you know, reflecting back, that's what I love about poetry. If, if I think about this poem so many years later and I can still remember that moment in time and how I felt on that stage holding up my rainbow. So I'm just gonna go through some stuff today, um, my music, a couple of pieces of my poetry and what they convey to me, like hope. Um, I wrote this particular song when I was going through a rough time but then I realized, you know, there's hope out there. It was a Saturday, much like any other day, when those stormy clouds started to come my way, with the rain falling down around me. I started to lose my way. I know you got a job to do, but I got flowers of my own. And I need sunshine, oh, to feed my soul. I've got to tend the garden of my life to make my dreams grow. And it's just a little part of a song that sort of gave me hope that there were better times just around the corner. And, you know, this sort of stuff also helps you deal and get a, 
around heartache. This was a poem that I wrote um, a few years ago after a very personal loss, and it helped me sort of get through that. It's called My Angel. She outran her angel like a tigress from a gun. There'd be no earthly pleasures. There'd be no earthly fun. Heartbeat slowly fading, little by little melting away. Give me one more minute, please just give me one more day. But the faces that were filled with hope slowly turn away. The faces that are left tell me there wouldn't come a day to watch her closely over her, to keep her safe and warm, to wipe her tears when she is crying, to help her weather the storm, to let her know she is loved beyond this earthly plane. So now it's up to you, Lord, to protect her from the rain. Now it's up to you, Lord, until I can hold her again. And songs can also convey strength. Um, Cheryl talked a little bit about this song in my intro, about performing it one time, and a woman came up to me afterwards and asked me for the lyrics, and I can't convey to you the sorrow and the heartache in her face as she was clutching those lyrics. But then I could see she had turned a corner and made a decision, and that this song made a difference, so. It's called You Gotta Break Away. He wounds, he mars, he doesn't hit, but still he leaves the scars, he stands. He holds, he breaks the spirit down, but not the bones. He waits, he shames. Her life is hell, but he says she's to blame. She hides, she cries, she sits and watches as the world goes by. She craves, she dreams, she wishes he was truly like he seemed. She feels no song. The music in her life is all but gone. You've got to break away. Replace the love, take a chance, make it real. You gotta let it go so you can heal. They hold. Thought that they could make it through the years. Things changed, went wrong. 
life happens and the strife I'll wake the strong Then hate So strong A heavy burden Where their hearts belong You gotta break away Fly above and never let the hate replace the love. Take a chance, make it real. You gotta let it go so you. Got to break away. And then you can also convey pride. And, and this poem is about my family and my sisters who drove up from Philadelphia to be here with me today and the strength that I always find in them when I need it, and it's called Generations. I've known rivers, mighty rivers. They cleanse my soul. I feel my father and his father and his father flowing through my veins deep in my soul. I feel my mother and her mother and her mother. <laughs> I hear the singing and the laughing and the crying and the struggles. I feel that in my veins, deep in my soul. I feel the pushing and the guiding and the loving. And I feel their power. And then, you know, songs can convey that message that you need somebody to hear. This song is called You Gotta Change. And uh, when I wrote it and sung it for my husband for the first time, he said, this is about me, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, all my songs aren't about you, but, you know, it, you might pick up a, you know, a thing or two. So. Change, change, change. Baby, you've got to change. Change, change, change. Baby, you've got to change. Like an acorn changes to a tree. You've got to change your ways for me. Change, 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 baby, you've got to change. My daddy tried to tell me that you're no good. My daddy tried to tell me you're no good. He said, I've seen that kind of man. He's going to use you all that he can. Change, change, change. Baby, you've got to change. Mama tried to tell me, just leave you alone. Mama tried to tell me, just leave you alone. But like a dog with a berry bone, I'm not happy till I'm dragging you home. Change, change, change. Baby, you've got to change. 
change, change, change. Baby, you've got to change. Like an acorn changes to a tree. You've got to change your ways for me. Change, change, change. Baby, you've got to change. My sisters tried to tell me you're not the one. My sisters tried to tell me that you're not the one. I said, well, maybe now you're not the one, but gonna change you before you can run. Change, 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 baby, you've got to change. Change, 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 baby, you've got to change. Like an acorn changes to a tree. You've got to change your ways for me. Change, change, change. Baby, you've got to change. Change, change, change. Baby, you've got to change. Change, change, change. Okay, I think everybody knows this part. Baby, you've got to change. <laughs> this last piece I want to do for you is um, a song to me that conveys love and conveys the feeling that there's always out there, there's always somebody out there for you to get you through the rough times. And this is called Lorraine's Song, and I wrote it about a particular person, so. This world is a bad, sad place Where you ride and hide and put aside Feelings and schemes and higher dreams Where families laugh and dreams are dashed a place where you hide to feel safe inside but she said sometimes you gotta cry open up like a cloudy sky and lean on me she said, sometimes you have to face the pain Pouring down like a heavy rain And lean on me This world is a hurtful place Where you lose your lovers and passions fade and lovers leave in a long parade Where endless nights turn into lonely days A place where you feel that love's unreal But she said, take it easy on yourself This world is hard enough and lean on me she said come along and sing with me learn to be wild and free and lean on me this world is a hopeful place if you find a friend to see you through the ups, the downs to help renew Where families laugh and good times last A place where you feel you can reveal oh, 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 oh. La, 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 
la 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 So you're going to have to imagine the piano part, but I'm just going to tell you the lyrics to it. It's called, It's Not a Long Way to Go. It must have been the hot desert sun to make me think I saw Jesus come and invite me in to his tent to meet some old friends. I said, aren't you God's right hand? He said, well, so are you if I am, because we bought tickets to the same show. Jump on stage. I see you in the front row. It's not a long way to go. And then somebody gave me a shove. I turned around, and it was Buddha with a smile on his face, saying, I heard you're looking for a state of grace. He said, I tried to push you into love, but you keep looking up. Don't you know what's above is here below? Come on, join us in the show. It's not a long way to go. You don't need a mountain to climb. You don't need to swim through the crocodiles. The only move you need to make is feel love every day. Let love fill you all the way with every breath you take. Then Lord Krishna gave me a wink. He said, let me tell you what I think. If you want to find God, all you have to do is blink and nod. God is not centralized. It's high voltage far and wide, and there's as much in you as anywhere else. You are much closer than you know. It's not a long way to go. Then I saw Adam and Eve. I said, you had it made. Why did you leave? He said, that's not the story we tell. We were eating at the Tree of Life, and someone shouted, God's outside. So we got up to look, and Eden was gone. We fell for the oldest trick known. God begins in your bones. Eden is a short walk home. You don't need a mountain to climb. You don't need to swim through the crocodile. The only move you need to make is feel love every day. Let love fill you all the way with every breath you take. Then an angel flew in the tent. A messenger you know who sent. She said, don't assume that you know what the prophets meant. Now, those were nice dreams they had, and you can choose to follow that. But only you can jump into love. Why wait to create the show? It's not a long way to go. And then she turned and looked at me, and she said, wow, you've changed. Can't you see? Take a look around. You are not the same now. And I was in the middle of the show. Everybody shouted, welcome home. I was creating what I know. It was not a long way to go. You don't need a mountain to climb. You don't need to swim through the crocodile. The only move you need to make is feel love every day. Let love fill you all the way with every breath you take. Wear God's eyes on your face and be who you are today. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I have something uh, new here that uh, I'm going to test with you. And uh, uh, still working on a title, um, so we'll just sort of uh, drop right into it. I will tell you that um, I mentioned the VA uh, in this piece, and I work at a VA medical center. I work with military veterans. David has one arm. He doesn't like his prosthesis, he tells me, with its leather straps and hook. He makes out very well, thank you very much. He has no trouble drinking with his only arm. Ralph was brought in frostbitten. He had wrapped himself in cardboard boxes and fallen asleep under a bridge. He reports, I was making out just fine out there, but I'm glad I'm here. Brian is here, again. 
He sees helicopters and bodies superimposed on his vision of life. He cries as he recounts, I stripped, I stripped naked and ran screaming around the compound. He was carrying his rifle like an Olympic torch. He doesn't know how he's going to make out. I drive back from the VA, and I make out by hitting the sack early. A John Wayne type floats in, green beret uniform in mint condition. He smiles widely, asks permission to carry me off and go suck face. I wanted to let you know the names were changed to protect the innocent in this piece. Isabel Ferguson wrote this. Now that the mountain ash has fallen down, no berries for the robins in fall. And you remind me that those days are gone when what took place and shape I could recall. The ball of life has shown a tiny crack where thoughts fall through into a deep unknown. And all uncertain now, I can't look back into a time when it was smooth as stone. Yet from the broken stump, a green flame shoots. And though it may yet wither and turn brown, burned by the August sun that dries its roots, its sudden promise cannot be put down so long as sap flows up and birds stretch wings, so flies our hope through small and unseen things. Thank you. Mm -hmm.